So let's imagine we are pulsar astronomers and we found a pulsar. And when we measure when the pulses arrive, the time of arrival against the observing date, we can find the regular rate, but we find an anomaly that sometimes they are just coming at the time we expect them to do, sometimes they come a bit early, sometimes they come a bit late. And this oscillates backwards and forwards in a sine wave sort of fashion. So, evidence for a planet orbiting the, the neutron star. So what can we work out about the planet? Well, the first thing we can work out is the period. The period would be from there to there, or from here to here, from peak to peak, or trough to trough, or from where it crosses the zero axis going up to next time it crosses the zero axis in the same direction. So we can measure that, and from that we can work out how far the planet is from the neutron star. Using the equation, r equals the cube root of g times the mass of the neutron star times the period we've just measured squared divided by 4 pi squared. Note that we need to know the mass of the neutron star. We're going to have to work that out some other way. Typically, neutron stars are all pretty similar in mass to each other, so it's not too hard. Okay, so we now know how far out the planet is, but how heavy is it? Well, this is something else we can measure from our data, which is the amplitude. Let's call that the uh, uh, A. Now, if the, the pulses arrive early, that's because the pulsar at this point is a bit closer to us, whereas if they arrive late over here, it's because it's further away. So what that means is the distance to us is varying by A times the speed of light. So is that telling us by how far the pulsar is moving as it goes round and round in its reflex motion? Well, not really, because we don't know if the orbit is edge-on. If the orbit is edge-on, then that is indeed equal to the size of the reflex motion, which I'll call R star, the orbital radius here. But if the orbit is tilted, so let's say, for example, the Earth is over here, that's us looking, and it's going something like that, then the, the, the distance it's moving back and forth is not R star, but R star sine of the inclination angle. So that's what we really know, the amplitude times c is r star sine i. But anyway, given that, what is the mass of the planet? Well, we know that the ratio of the motion of the star to the motion of the planet is going to be, by the very definition of centre of mass, equal to the mass of the planet divided by the mass of the star, the neutron star. So that means the mass of the planet equals the mass of the neutron star times r star over r. And we can get r star from this equation. So what we find out is that the mass of the planet equals mass of the star, r star over r, and that r star is a c over sine i. So that's how the mass of the planet can be estimated, but it's only a lower limit. The smallest mass will be when i is um, 90 degrees, and so sine i is 1, in which case the mass of the planet will just be m star a c over r, where c is the speed of light. If the inclination is more and more tilted, then this all gets bigger and bigger, because your sine gets smaller, 1 over sine gets bigger, and so the mass of the planet could be larger. So all we really know is a lower limit on the mass of the planet.